Musselnerd. I'm part of the iPod dev team. What I'm about to show you is the first public demonstration of a jailbroken iPod Touch second generation. Uh, here's the plan for the demo. I'm going to first uh, show you and describe the basic problem that a jailbreak has to overcome. I'll show you this jailbroken iPod not booting because Apple can detect our jailbreak at a very low level. But then I'll apply a patch called Red Snow, which overcomes Apple's checks. And then I'll be able to show you this jailbroken iPod booting normally and running, and I'll show you actual jailbroken applications running on it. So this is my iPod Touch 2G. It's an 8-gig model with a silver back. It's got the, um, the volume rocker switch with the Exynos speaker here on the left-hand side. <coughs> but you can see on my main screen, iPod's pretty upset right now. It doesn't want to boot the main file system that I have on here because I modified it. I've jailbroken it, and I've invalidated the signature of the kernel. The iPod can detect this, and it refuses to run it. So even though the file system on here is jailbroken, the iPod as a whole is not bootable right now. I'll show you some more detail here on my MacBook. This is the output of uh, a program written by Apple. It's a low-level boot monitor called iBoot. iBoot's complaining pretty clearly that the kernel is invalid. And again, this is because I patched the kernel for the jailbreak. I wrap the signature of the kernel, and iBoot can detect this. I boot, will refuse to boot anything not properly signed by Apple, including my patched kernel. So I can sit here all day long and ask it to boot the file system, and it will refuse every time. This is where Red Snow comes in. I'm going to apply our Red Snow patch. Okay, it's done. Red Snow has removed the signature checks performed by iBoot. It's actually exploited a hole in iBoot to patch out the signature checks. So now iBoot, when I hit this button over here, should accept the patched kernel happily and then boot the system. And there you have an accepting of the kernel and it's, it's going to go off and boot. So we're going to sit here, wait for the scene to come up. And I'm going to walk through a few applications that you can't normally get from the Apple App Store, and I'll show you the jailbreak. Um, first, I will show you uh, mobile, ter mobile terminal. We showed a screenshot from this on our blog. It gives you a native command line shell with full root, full root access to the entire file system. Apple normally prevents that kind of access in any of the applications that you can get from the App Store. I'm going to show you Cydia now. Cydia is one of the two main installers that you get non-app store apps from on any jailbroken system. So it's going to go off to the network, get any updates that are outstanding. And we'll wait for that to happen. We'll go to sections, all packages. And these are the applications that you can get, non-official applications that you won't find on the app store. And the list is pretty big, I can't go through all the screens. And finally, what I'll show you is the NES emulator. Now, remember, this is the iPod 2G, so it has an external speaker on it. And so we'll pull up a game like Galaga. Start. Now, again, a game emulator is not the kind of, kind of application that you'll see Apple accept into the App Store. But you can get it through the on the external speakers. Um, okay, so now let me describe the problem that we have yet to solve. This problem is preventing us from releasing an easy-to-use jailbreak program today, right now. Now, you saw back here on my MacBook, um, you saw this tool, this GUI uh, program called Recovery Tool. This, this tool was written by a dev team member, WizDev, and it's our interface to iBoot. It allows us to talk to iBoot and hide the Red Snow patch in RAM to get past the signature checking. The problem is, right now, in this current form, you need to use something like Recovery Tool to apply the patch every time the system boots. So right now, this is a sort of a tethered jailbreak, and it's not very useful to most people. Our goal is to get rid of the requirement for being tethered to another computer when the iPod Touch 2G reboots. Okay, uh, that's the demo. Um, our blog is blog.iphone-dev.org. And you can get to it by clicking on the link over on the left-hand side of the quick window. Uh, we'll have more updates as they come available, so thanks for watching.